factory78.com. I'm Adi Shokwe here. We're here to meet another sports personality, a football player to be exact, a Nigerian international, John Utaka, the place for Portsmouth Football Club. We're at the training facilities to speak to him today, so it's factory78.com. Come follow me. This is factory78.com. We've come out here to Portsmouth Training Centre to meet one of Africa's finest football players, Nigeria's finest, John Utaka. How are you doing today? I'm okay, thanks very much. Well, it was um, an honour, first of all, when we got the invite to come down and see you. We jumped right away, we jumped into the car and decided to come out here to speak to a football player. We've spoken to athletes, boxers, musicians, but it was a different type of um, vibe we got from you. And the reason we decided to come speak to you is because why not you know Nigeria Africa we have to represent you know so look at you all dressed up like it's it's just a normal day for you <laughs> but you just finished training how was the training today anyway it's first of all it's always good to have your people around I'm glad you guys came down you know it's a pleasure uh, to see you guys around um, Today's uh, session has gone, you know, so um, it was um, a, a little bit relaxed because of the game we played uh, two days ago. So um, we just had a bit of uh, 6v6 and, uh, you know, a few runnings, but now um, everything is, you know, is done and now we're ready to, you know, to go and have rest and prepare for tomorrow. You just spoke about the football, we're going to get into it. John Utaka, a lot of people know you. Uh, like other football players, playing for big clubs. You're playing for Portsmouth Football Club in England, one of the biggest you know, countries to play your trade anywhere in the world. Let's talk about how it started. Born in Enugu, plays in Europe. How did you start that journey from Enugu to England? Um, I was born and brought up in Cole City, Enugu. I um, started playing in the street when I was uh, six, you know, um, like most of the boys do, you know, when they're in the area that I come from, we enjoy playing football, you know. Um, that's what we enjoy Saturdays, like after school during the week, then Saturdays we throw our balls out, try to enjoy, uh, you know, on the streets. And, uh, you know, I enjoyed it uh, the past years. And uh, when I was playing there, I was fortunate to get uh, spotted by an agent, you know, who came down from uh, Egypt. Um, he picked me up from there, you know, spoke with my parents, told them that he's going to find me an amateur club in Egypt, you know. So, um, but I was lucky enough to go there and then uh, grab a first team um, opportunity, you know. Signed in Arab contractors when I went there, I was 16. Um, but for me it was all dreams anyway because I never, never imagined that it would happen but I was, you know, like I said, fortunate a lot, uh, enough to, to get that um, opportunity. You know, I was, you know, pleased. Yeah. Now, you talked about the fact that you were playing on the streets and you got the opportunity, got spotted. One, how many people in, 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 in Nigeria or Africa get spotted by an agent that says, let's take a chance on this guy? But I think the most interesting part for someone like me is Nigeria, Africa, we know how education is important yeah. to our parents. But for your parents to have agreed to allow you to pursue your sport, tell us about how that conversation went. Um, anyway, my you know, parents have been supporting me all day, you know, um, even when I was playing in the streets. The, I mean, you know, when you're playing and people are, you know, admiring what you do, that shows you a sign that uh, maybe this kid got something in him, you know. And so um, they were like, OK, keep doing what you do. But we also want you to, you know, you know, take a look at your books as well. So um, I was, you know, studying and then at the same time I was, you know, playing my football during recreation times at school. I used to take my ball and then go out we play we are like maybe 40 kids each each goal you know and then we scored in here and scored there <laughs> as well so the you know, right now, but we are i think uh, that period we are learning the trade but without without even knowing that we are learning it so i mean because what we do as a foot as, as a footballer like you know me africans and you know some other part of the world is when you play when you're a kid um, you don't know, but all those skills is not they come natural because they come natural. And then when you do it in the field, it's like wow. But this is what we've been learning for the past years, you know. So um, they told me to you know keep keep my eye on my books and at the same time enjoy play the football. If you have both, it's like best of both worlds. So I mean. Uh, but they supported me through when the time comes to live. They didn't want me to go anywhere because uh, it was my first time leaving Nigeria anywhere. I haven't, you know, traveled out of Nigeria before. 
But they said, okay, you have to go and take your chances. We know it's difficult, but since you insist that you want to go and give it a try, then, you know, um, we can let you go on. Yeah, so. Playing for Arab contractors, you, you signed in Egypt, you played in Egypt, um, and then it moved on from there to Qatar, yeah. and then France, yeah. where the, the, the lights really shine. Um, when I was in Egypt, I did some good things as well. Played in Arab, played Arab contractors, then Ismaili. Yes, uh, that was where you became top league scorer, yeah. I think in 2001 or something. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Ismaili, then from Ismaili to Qatar for six months, we won the, um, the Arab League Cup and then from there um, to, to World Cup in 2002, Korea, Japan. That was my first uh, call-up. I was like, for me, it was like, uh, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it anyway, but I get, I, I, I was fortunate again to be picked for the team. I uh, went there, um, it was, you know, it was a good experience. Being at the World Cup is the pinnacle of the whole thing, you know, so, um, and I was, I was thankful as well because uh, lots of players played the whole of their career without going to the World Cup and I've been fortunate, I was 20 at that time. You know, I went there with the big lads like Kanu, Kocha and the rest of them, Finidi, you know, so. And then Babayaro and all that. So for me, it was like, and you know, being uh, realizing that um, my coming from where I come from, that this, I, that was something for me, you know. So, and I was very pleased. So, speaking about the World Cup, that one, um, playing for your country for the first time in an international competition. Tell us about the feeling you get when you put on the Nigerian, the national team jersey. Fans don't know how that means or what that means to people. So what did it mean to you? For me, it means a lot because when you wear your national jerseys, it's national pride. You want to defend your country, you know, at all costs. You know, you put that, you put on that green jersey, you know that you're going there to, you know, for like war kind of, but in a good way because you want to defend your country. We make, you want to make sure you raise your, your flag high, you know. That's what some other people don't know. It's not just wearing the jersey and all fitted and all that coming out and be running. No, you have to know that it's competition. You know, whatever you do, there stays, you know. You know you mark history when you you defend your country and play well like most of the time we win games it's not just winning the game you know that 150 million are watching you you know and you're defending your country to the fullest so for me that means a lot when i play for nigeria anytime i play for nigeria i try to give in my give my best you know 100 percent that's the most important thing john Nigeria has not been as successful as a lot of people would have liked, especially in the last um, competitions, the World Cup 2010 South Africa, Nations Cup as well. You know, how does it make you feel as a football fan, seeing the dis you know the disappointments on the faces of other people? You know, just uh, talking on the internet, the newspapers. What what, what goes through your mind as a football player? Um, I think um, we we underperformed because we had qualities in the team. You know, but we underperformed. From and as football players, we are disappointed. Even we are the first that are disappointed, even before the fans. You know, I know that we should have done better. You know, but I just believe that um, we were more uh, like individuals than collective. You know, because we have individual talents anyway. But I think the problem lies in bringing the, you know, collect collectiveness into uh, in, uh, individual uh, talents we've got into a collective. You know, so I think we are not, we are just doing playing our own. You know, individual football. I think that really we didn't play. As a team, yeah, we didn't really play as a team, but despite that, I mean, we had one of the best footballers in the world, honestly. But just to bring ourselves together, I think will help us to go maybe, you know, forward. Africa's finest football players, John Itaka, has blessed us with a day at the Portsmouth Football Ground Training Centre just to have a, a chilled out day with him. And we're still hanging with him. We're about to, you know, just wrap this up. But hey, we're not going to leave that quick. Now, Mr. John, another interesting part that I noticed while researching on you, because a lot of football players are involved in, in charities. You know, they try to give back to the community that they've come from or perhaps that they live in. But we really don't find that out. What we see in the press is, ah, oh, he's got a new girlfriend, he's <laughs> smashed his car, <laughs> you know, he's in trouble falling out of a club drunk. 
But what caught me is you are one of the football players that have tried to reach out to the community that you come from. Tell us about the charity that you're involved in. Um, I'm doing, uh, just uh, launched my uh, John Taka Foundation anyway. It's uh, basically giving back to the under, uh, underprivileged, you know, because um, I've been through that road before. Um, I know what it's like, you know, not having anything. I know what it's like, not like having clothes to put on, having maybe three square meals, but people don't really understand that. Um, so it's just like giving like uh, scholarships to maybe uh, student, um, students that cannot afford it. You know, also try to help others that are skillfully good in, uh, you know, um, craft or whatever else they, they, you know, you know, they can uh, produce so music or whatever. So try to help them here in, uh, in Europe. Wow. How do people get that? Do you have a website that they could go to or how do people find John Otaka Foundation? Go to www.johnotakafoundation.com okay, so yeah. Yes. Fantastic. Now, a football player's day. We want to know. We know about the big checks, the big contracts, the fast cars, the beautiful women. Tell us the truth about a footballer's life. What happens to you when you wake up in the morning till the time you go to sleep? Anyway, people don't. Uh, people just seen, um, you know, from the outside, judging from the outside. But um, if you know. Uh, only an insider will know what goes on anywhere but it's not all about cars it's not about women it's not all about whatever you know but um, they should look at it from a normal a normal man's perspective you know we wake up in the morning have your breakfast as a normal person uh, come down here whatever the weather is raining snowing whatever we train here we are provided with everything like from track suits to when it's get when it gets cold like now we've got trousers we've got tights like leggings you know just to protect <laughs> yeah, just yourself you've got gloves you've got um, hair gears you've got everything you know because we know at the end of the day we work hard you know we work hard people have ways of spending their money you know um and us like africans i mean we know we have families we have friends you know um we have to help them one way or the other you know we're not like get making the money and be using it only on ourselves we have families we know we have brothers and relations we need to reach out to them as well john otaka what about you does a lot of people out there the fans don't know i heard that you speak a couple of languages international languages <laughs> <laughs> tell us what languages and how did you learn these languages um, i can speak french and arabic but french because i played in france for five years wow. so i mean uh, that's why i can speak french you know arabic, arabic stayed in the arab uh, region for like four or five years as well so that's why I can speak Arabic because I, I like to know the things that I don't know and when I'm in a country I will do my best to make sure that I learn the language. To wrap this up, what are the business interests that John Otaka is involved in? I want to go into fashion, I want to go into television, I want to go, I want to do different things because I'm, I, don't, I don't just want to be, it's good to be a footballer, that's an opportunity given to you to expand every other thing you want to do. Uh, so I want to, you know, have my own things, you know, like I said, uh, maybe clothing line, maybe going into, you know, say that, uh, you know, uh, you never know, you know, you, you know, you can You're always. like a fashion guru right now, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> Why not Hollywood? Why not, yes. you know, try to go into cinemas? You never know, you know, but I try to expand what I do. It's not just, you know, people like, the, you know, be versatile in what you do. I mean, even if I haven't done it before, I want to learn to see how it works. So, um, you know, just keep it, you know, you're open minded, try to to do different things. So I would like to like really make sure that, you know, it happens. Wow. Fantastic. Well, Mr. Otaka, it's been an absolute pleasure of us to come round and see how you do it. We were excited to be here with you and hopefully we wish you first of all good luck in the next games coming up. I know you're fit right now, so <laughs> we need to see you on the pitch yeah. scoring more goals yeah. and um, hopefully we'll be able to work together in, in the future. Have a fantastic day, sir. Thank you very much. Good to have you guys around. Thank you. Thanks.